This conference will now be recorded. Hi everyone, uh, good morning. Uh, so yesterday we discussed about namespace concept. In the namespace concept, there are three types of namespaces. Default, uh, sorry, uh, target namespace, XMLNS, and default namespace. So in the last session, we discussed about target namespace and XMLNS, right? So, and we took an example as well. I took an example uh, of XSD and XML, and I shown you the syntax, how to write the target namespace, the syntax, how to write the XMLNS, okay? And this namespace concept is not just meant for only XML and XSD. Okay, this is for the whole XML family languages. Okay, so target namespace. So, what do you mean by target namespace? Target namespace is a logical name of a document which can be also considered as logical package structure or logical space of a document. We, we, we must maintain target namespace in a document where at least one user defined keyword was defined okay for example you can consider xsd xsd is eligible to have a target namespace because in xsd we define complex elements simple elements and attributes so name of the complex element name of the simple element name of the attribute are user defined keywords we can give any keyword, we can define a complex element, we can define a simple element, and we can define an attribute in an XSD. So XSD is eligible to maintain target namespace. So at runtime, at runtime, this target namespace behaves as a logical space and loads the definition. Okay, so let me show you the let me open the image as well which we discussed yesterday <laughs> web service okay if you see this this is how the target namespace and XML XMLNS behaves. I mean, uh, <clears throat> if you consider this XSD document, if you consider this XSD document, this guy, we defined user-defined keywords. So we are going to maintain a target namespace in this document. At runtime, this, this target space, this target namespace forms a logical space and loads all the user defined keyword definitions and these definitions will be retrieved in xml these definitions will be retrieved into xml for that we have to maintain xmlns in the xml document okay so this xmlns will help the parser will help the parser to retrieve the definitions and validate the XML in XML document. I mean, validate each element in XML document. So this, we saw an example in the previous session, right? Let me go to the notepad file. If you see this, yesterday we saw an example of XSD. It has a target namespace. It has a target namespace. And we have two XMLs. We have two XMLs, line number eight, up to line number eight, one example of XML and up to line number 17 seven, this is one example of xml these two xmls if you provide these two xmls to parser and if you ask the parser to validate these xmls if you ask the parser to validate these xmls okay parser will say the first xml is invalid xml because it has a item 3 element and it is not defined as per xsd there is no definition we found in the XSD. Item three was not defined if you observe the XSD. Okay, but if you take the second example, this example, parser will validate and confirms that 
it is a valid XML. And we discussed it, right? How the parser step by step it will go and validate each element, each each element in XML. Okay. But always remember, guys, this namespace concept is not just limited to only XML and XST. We need to generalize it. We need to generalize it. Okay. So <clears throat> I, I gave you some statements as well yesterday. If you see this which document is eligible to have target namespace there are several xml family documents right xml xsd visible target namespace x query there are going forward we see more other languages as more other xml family languages as well okay but now the question is more generic it is not specific to xml or xsd the question is very specific here i mean it's not very generic not specific to one document okay which document is eligible to have target namespace so answer is if the xml family document contains at least one user defined keyword the document is eligible to have a target namespace okay so if you see in the as per current knowledge as of now as per our previous discussions xsd is the best example to maintain target namespace because xsd has user defined keywords if you see this example order request order id customer name item one cost item two cost there are more than one user defined keyword so we are eligible to maintain the target namespace okay and now go to the second point which document is eligible to have xmlns which document is eligible to have XMLNS? So what is the answer here? Doc, if you can take any document, any XML family document, if it contains at least one predefined keyword, at least one predefined keyword, that document is eligible to maintain XMLNS. If you see this example, line number 12 to 17, line number 12 to 17, okay so the this document this xml document contains predefined keywords if you see order request order id customer name item one item two five predefined keywords we are maintaining in this valid xml so this document we must maintain xmlns that helps the parser easily validates the document okay now i mean this is an example of xmlns in, X, in an XML document, we can use XMLNS, but XMLNS is not just restricted to XML. We can use it in several other places as well. We'll see that, okay? This is what we discussed in the previous session. Okay, now let me go a little bit more detail on this example, okay? We will elaborate the discussion on this namespace concept. Right, so I, I took another example, guys, to make you understand XMLNS. If you observe this XML, see this in each element, I wrote the respective XMLNS and consider, consider this XML as a valid XML. Let's assume, let's assume this is valid, okay, no? right? So, I mean, uh, there is a specific XSD and this XML is valid XML. Okay, so what I want to show you is in this example, I'm maintaining XMLNS. I'm maintaining XMLNS for every element. Okay, which causes the size of the XML got increased. If you observe the document, the size of the document increased because I'm using XMLNS with every element. See, I, I started this example with an assumption. This is a valid XML. There is an XSD. There is an XSD. We are not concentrating on XSD right now. There is an XSD, and this is a valid XML. And if you observe the XML, there are two, two different XMLNS. Two different XMLNS. Observe. There are element, there are, there are one. The first XMLNS is this one. If you observe the example, everyone, please let me know if you have, if you don't understand something, okay? Immediately stop me and ask me if you don't understand something. If you observe this example, there are two different XMLNS. There are two different XMLNS. That means 
see student student SID student SID S name are from this namespace okay practice.com demo student these three elements defined in an XSD these three elements defined in an XSD where the XSD target namespace is this one is the point clear sir these three elements these three elements defined in an XSD where XSD target namespace is this one practice.com demo student and come to the other elements the second namespace address type city state so these four elements these four elements defined in this in this target namespace i mean these four elements defined in an xsd where xsd target namespace is practice.com demo address so any questions as of now please unmute and let me know the example what i am talking about are you clear with this example i'm showing you one xml with a bunch of elements and some of the elements are related to student namespace some of the elements are related to address namespace and there is a there is an xsd and this xml i i ask you to assume a valid xml how that how this kind of combination of xsd see some elements some elements defined in xsd1 some elements defined in xsd2 but with the combination of these two xsds i prepared this xml okay and i am telling you this xml is a valid xml just assume for now going forward i will show you how how to define that combination of xsds okay but now just assume this xml is valid and few elements defined in student namespace few elements defined in address namespace so till this point do you have any question about this xml please unmute and let me know if you have a question unmute and speak if you don't have a question still unmute and speak give me the confirmation uh, sir uh, this is somewhere uh, i have one doubt sir here yes, sir, sir address address is a child element of the students sir so in uh, but uh, in the name uh, here the address uh, exist we haven't yes, seen correct. the student also correct so that's what i'm saying how to make this combination of xsd see here it is not this xml is following two xsds it's not one xsd okay how to con how to make such xsds i am going to tell you okay that was not covered as part of the course till now but i am going to tell you how to build that complex xsds okay but for now i am asking everybody to assume let's assume the xsd setup is already there and we are just we are just concentrating on the xml and we and we are assuming this is valid xml how that xsd was built i will tell you later okay for now that's okay. not required for me okay yeah any other question Sir, if you have a question, unmute and talk and ask me your question. If you don't have a question, please unmute and say you don't have, you, you are clear with the example. Everybody, please speak out. Kaza, you are, are you speaking something? Give me confirmation, guys. If you give me confirmation, it will be easy for me. Till now, no, uh, we have no doubt, sir. Others, others, yes, come sir. on. No, sir, okay. clear. Right. Okay. Yes. So please speak out, guys. Don't just be on mute. I don't know whether you are following or not. Okay. Right. So now my objective. Why I took this example and what is the objective? Okay. If you see this example, I am using namespace in every element. Okay. But what I want to do is I want to improve this document. I want to avoid unwanted uses of XMLNS in this document. Okay, 
yesterday we discussed one one rule yesterday we discussed one rule do you remember when when in an xml parent element and chained element if they have same namespace when parent element and child element if they have same namespace no need to maintain the xml ns in the child element we discussed this in the yesterday session right so what i want to do i want to implement the logic in this example okay so when parent element and child element if they have same namespace we no need to write the namespace in the child element that means student and sid parent and child okay so both are having same namespace so can i avoid can i avoid namespace in the child element possible allowed not allowed allowed sir allowed so i no need to have namespace in the child element check the s name s name student parent and child see student is the parent element s name is the child element you no need to have the namespace in s name and here you see student and address student is the parent element address is the child element but they are having different namespaces they are having different namespaces so you must not delete this namespace okay you must not delete okay let's go to the next element what is the next element type so in the type yes. element type element what is the parent of type address yes. address is the parent element type is the child element having same namespace so you can avoid namespace or xmlns in the child element same thing you need to apply for city state okay and again we have address element okay so what is the parent of address element here line number 40 yes. we have an address element who is the parent student student is the parent student is the parent so they are having different namespaces so you must maintain the xmlns come to type element same address is the parent type is the child same namespace you can avoid the xmlns address and city address and city you can avoid the namespace address and state you can avoid the namespace right and again i have one more address i have one more address parent is student student and address are not having same namespace so you should maintain the namespace come to type type and address parent and child they have same namespace you can avoid uses of xml ns in type element city element and the state element so i'm just improving the document size observe the first example this is the original example original xml and we are assuming it is valid we just assumed it is valid okay but i'm trying to the objective of this example is i'm trying to improve the document and size of this document okay so now if you see in this xml in this xml still we have all the elements in the valid valid state and we are also using namespaces the two different namespaces one is student namespace and one is address namespace and if you observe i'm using student namespace one time for the entire document address namespace three times correct so these address elements are from these address elements are defined in address xsd student elements are defined in student xsd so there are two different xsds so these two different xsds have two different target namespaces that that two different target namespaces we are using in this xml as xml ns any question any question so you understand how i improved the document size i reduced Sorry. the usage of xml with a formula the formula is when the parent element and child element are having same namespace we no need to maintain the xml ns in the child element you need to remember this rule okay now i'm not happy with this document guys this is okay this is this is a valid document no doubt syntactically the first example syntactically the first example is perfectly all right syntactically the second example also perfectly all right but this is an improved document the document size improved we reduced the document size 
by avoiding unwanted XMLNS. Okay, now even in this document, even in this document, we are using address namespace three times. I don't want to use address namespace more than one time. I just want to maintain it only one time. I don't want to have duplicate uh, duplicate copy of XMLNS. Can we can we improve this document little more? Yes, we can improve this document little more little more by introducing a concept called qualifiers okay by introducing a concept called qualifiers so i will i will tell you what is this qualifier so qualifier is a user defined short keyword generally we maintain or we will have a qualifier with two letters or three letters or four letters kind of keywords Qualifier is a user defined keyword and it is a short keyword short keyword. Okay Qualifier is considered as alias name of XMLNS Qualifier is considered as alias name of XMLNS any questions as of now Okay, I will show you how to how to write this qualifier now what i will do now if you see this example i want to have a qualifier for student for student namespace so this is the syntax xmlns colon ns1 see this is just a user defined keyword not more than that it is just a user defined keyword a short keyword Three, two characters or three characters we will maintain or four characters I, I mean there is no limitation but it is always suggestible to have a short keyword okay and this ns1 behaves as alias name of student namespace so this is the big string right if you see this http colon slash slash practice.com slash demo slash student for the big string this is a short name. This is a short name and we consider this as alias name. Okay, when you maintain a qualifier in a document, when you maintain a qualifier in a document as alias name of namespace, you have to prefix the qualifier for all the elements, for all the elements related to the namespace. When you maintain a qualifier, when you maintain a qualifier for a namespace, nothing but XMLNS, when you maintain a qualifier for an XMLNS, you also need to prefix the qualifier for all the elements, the elements which are belongs to the namespace. Suppose in our example, what are the elements belongs to student namespace? Uh, SID, stu uh, S name, and student, student, S I D S name student S I D S name belongs to student namespace address type city state belongs to address yes. namespace okay now if you see this example I am maintaining a qualifier for student namespace so I have to prefix the qualifier I have to prefix the qualifier for all the elements related to this namespace. Is it clear? That means I need to prefix ns1 colon ns1 colon for all the student related namespace elements for all the student related namespace elements open tag and close tag. You need to provide the qualifier in open tag and close tag. See student close tag. See student open tag, student close tag, SID open tag, SID close tag, S name open tag, S name close tag. So if you have a qualifier as an alias name of namespace, you have to use the qualifier in your that that namespace related elements as prefix. Any question? Any question? 
Awesome. I will show you the advantage. I will show you the advantage, what it is doing, why, why we have to maintain the qualifier. But how I am applying the qualifier, you must understand. No, only uh, who is speaking? Only one guy is speaking. Samaya, no others, no other guy is speaking. Vikram, Vikram, Sampath, please confirm whether you understand how I use it this qualifier. Sir, clear, sir. Sampath. Kaja. Okay. Now, can I can I apply the same concept on address address namespace? We can also have a we can also have a we can also have a qualifier on the address namespace as well, right? So let me say NS2 NS2. So now what I need to do that address qual address namespace related elements must be prefixed with NS2 qualifier. Okay, so that means NS2 address ns2 okay. i need to give this qualifier okay yes but when you are applying qualifier make sure guys you need to apply the qualifier in the open tag as well as close tag in the open tag as well as close tag i have something wrong here let me correct this I just, it's a typo mistake okay then now come to the current example so what i'm doing see this guys line number 55 my address xml started at line number 55 and closed at line number 59 okay and this address namespace this address namespace is applicable only within this scope this open tag and close tag this open tag and close tag this address namespace is applicable within the scope okay of course i have another address here i have another address here but this is not inside above address it is outside above address so this guy not at all related to above address okay both are two different address xmls that's it okay what i mean is here i can define another qualifier called ns3 because qualifier is just a user defined keyword and it, it behaves as alias name of xml ns okay so here what i need to prefix ns3 you understand sir everyone Yes, sir. why i am using ns2 and why i am using ns3 because the scope matters because... here scope, scope of the element scope of the namespace also matters so here it is here it is an open tag and here it is closed tag that means the scope is restricted only for these five lines 55 to 59 this is restricted to five lines okay so the ns2 will work within this scope okay so within this scope the ns2 considered as alias name of address address namespace i have another address i have another address here but i have another address here but here i want to maintain ns3 as my qualifier because the scope is different of course it is the same same access same xml with different data same xml with different data and using the same xsd but the scope of the elements are different okay so here i have the choice either i can <clears throat> i mean the qualifier i mean it's completely user defined keyword within the scope within the scope it will be operated okay any questions guys any no, questions sir. no okay now the third address third address can I use a qualifier NS2? Can I use a qualifier NS2 in the third yes. address? Sir, it is yes, allowed. It is allowed. It is How so? allowed because it is allowed because 
above NS2 is restricted within this scope. Kind of local global variables, guys. See, when we have a program, when we have a program, what how I can say? See, the scope of this NS2 qualifier will not go out of this address element. That means in the entire document, line number 52 to 70, line number 52 to 70, NS1 is accessible. Line number 52 to 70, NS1 is accessible. NS2, NS2 is accessible only between line number 55 to 59. Is the point clear? Yes, sir. Okay. NS3 is accessible only between line number 60 to line number 64. Suppose when my control, when my parser control is here, my parser is in this line. Okay, my parser is trying to validate this element. Parser don't consider NS2 and NS3 because they are local to that specific elements. But parser will consider NS1 because NS1 is in the global scope. It is in the global scope. NS1 is accessible between 52 to 70. But NS2 is accessible only between 55 to 59. NS3 is accessible between 60 to 64. Okay, so now in the third address element, third address element, it is completely my choice, whatever the qualifier I want to use. Suppose either I can go for NS4 or I can go for NS2. Because this is a new NS2. This NS2 is not at all related to above NS2. Above NS2 scope is between 55 to 59, that's it. So below NS2 scope is 65 to 69. Let's assume, guys, in my home, we are two brothers, okay? My name is Santosh. Will my parents keep the same name for my brother? No, sir. They will, they will have a different name, right? They will give a different name to my brother. Definitely, they don't use same name. Let's assume in your home, you are two brothers, okay? Do you have a chance one guy name can be Santosh? Maybe, sir. We can. Possible or not? So this because is my home is my scope. My home is my scope. Your home is your scope. In my home, there is one Santosh. In your home, you may have one Santosh. Possible? That's what here I'm saying. In this address element, qualifier scope is limited to this address element that's it o between open tag and close tag but if you take this example ns1 is an alias name of student sorry ns1 is an alias name of student namespace student namespace and the scope of the ns1 is between open tag and close tag okay between open tag and close tag so here this is ns2 and it is limited between 55 to 59 between open tag and close tag. So in the third address element, it is your choice. Either you can have a qualifier as NS2 or you can have a qualifier as NS4. That's your choice only. There is no conflict between these two. Even though if I maintain NS2, not an issue. Still, this is a good XML. Any questions? As of now, any questions? Uh, sir, I have one. Yes, go ahead. Sir, actually, in line number 55, the NS2 is there, and line number 65, and we have also NS2. If we line have uh, 55, uh, 55, yeah, 55, the yeah. address NS2 Correct. is there, and line Correct. number 60, 65, yeah. NS2 also there. If we duplicate Correct. the thing like this, uh, what yeah. do you get the benefit? I mean, so what, what are the advantages? Okay, I will talk about the advantage. Concept is not over. Okay. okay sir. First thing okay. is I am telling you the syntax how we are allowed to write. Okay, then I will talk about it. Okay. Yes, but okay. Whether, whether you understand the scope for now, the scope. I mean, yes, sir. In, within uh -huh. this scope, this NS2 will work. Within this scope, this NS2 will work. There is no clash between these two. Okay. 
but still we did not achieved our uh, objective what is our objective i want to avoid duplicate namespaces that is our objective right so here yes, in this example in this example every element we wrote the namespace every yes, element we wrote the xml ns in the second example we we improved it we improved the document by decreasing the usage of xml ns yes, even though in this document i am using address three times i am using address namespace three times i am not happy with that i'm trying to improve it the first understand the objective okay i'm trying yes. to improve the, even the second example i'm trying to improve so to improve that i introduced a concept called qualifiers first i am telling you the syntax how to write qualifiers and the scope of the qualifiers if you define one qualifier from what is the starting point of the qualifier what is the end of the qualifier okay now now so till this point you are clear guys everybody student xml has student namespace has a qualifier called ns1 address namespace has a qualifier called ns2 ns3 ns2 okay and the scope scope is limited scope is limited between open and closed tags okay scope is limited between closed and open tags done so are you clear till this point everybody sir, sir, one more sir and uh, sir how to recognize that uh, parser control uh, the six uh, means how to differentiate this 55 and uh -huh. 65 both are ns2 address and means prefix are same sir how can you differentiate the that uh, control here i will i will i will explain okay oh, okay sir. okay just listen okay so example and syntax are clear i'm writing ns1 ns2 ns3 and ns2 okay now now we understand this right this ns2 is local local to the scope of these elements this ns2 is local to the scope of these elements 55 to 59 this ns3 is local between 60th line to 64 line and this ns2 is between 65 to 69 okay now now <coughs> Let's assume you want to validate this document. If you give this document to parser, you are asking parser to validate. Sir, what is our assumption? There is an XSD, there is an XSD, and this is a valid XML. That is our assumption, and how that XSD we did not see right now. But we are assuming there is an XSD where that XSD contains uh, student elements, where there is a second XSD which contains address elements. Okay, let's visualize. Let's visualize yourself. There, there is, there are two XSD: student XSD, address XSD. Now, I am asking my parser. Now, I am asking my parser validate this XML. So, parser will follow a series of steps to validate an XML. Correct? That's what we discussed in the previous session as well. So, step number one: parser, parser will will identify an element to perform the validation parser will identify an element to perform the validation let's assume parser identified an, identified an element called student okay step number one step number two step number two it will check do we have a qualifier it will check do we have a qualifier do we have a qualifier sir Yes, NS1. we have a qualifier called NS1. We have a qualifier called NS1. Step number three, parser will check, do we have a namespace in the current element? Do we have sir. a namespace in the current element? What is the answer? Do we have yes, a namespace sir. in the current element? Yes, yes sir. We have, we have namespace in the current element. Okay, is the qualifier matching between element and namespace is the qualifier matching between element and namespace is it matching or not matching sir is the qualifier matching student qualifier is ns1 xml ns qualifier is ns1 so parser consider this student element definition the definition of student element we can get it from this namespace from student namespace okay now 
parser control goes to the respective XSD and search for definition of student. And if parser finds the definition of student, this element is valid. If parser not able to find the definition of student, this element becomes invalid. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Now let's let's uh, let's ask the parser to validate the second element. Okay. Now what parser will do? Step number one: identify the element which parser want to validate. Identify the element which parser want to validate. Which element we want to identify? SID. We want to identify SID and we want to validate this element. Step number two: Do we have qualifier in this element do we have a qualifier yes sir, sir. yes sir ns1. ns1 we have a qualifier called ns1 ns1 step number 3 step number 3 do we have xml ns in the current element do we have xml ns in the current element yes sir yes, no something do we have xml ns in the current element yes sir that ns1 listen and answer do we have xml ns in the current element do we have xml ns in the current element no sir we haven't no sir no where is the xml ns in this line you know english right you know alphabets where is the xml ns do no, you sir. see xml ns in this line in no, line sir. number 53, anybody see XML NS? No, sir. We okay. haven't seen. If you don't no, see, say no. If you see, say yes. Speak out. Do you see XML NS in line number 53? No, no, sir. When no, sir. when current element don't have XML NS, what is the behavior of parser? The parser go to parent element and it will parser check. Parser control but... goes to parent element parser control goes to parent element so sid don't have xml ns so the parser control goes to its parent who is the parent of sid student student, student. and student. check for the xml ns the parser control goes to parent element and check for the xml ns do we have xml ns in the parent element yes sir we have yes, yes. sir we have and, yeah so we have XML NS in the parent element. Is the qualifier matching between current element? Is the qualifier matching between current element and parent XML NS? Is it matching or not? Yes, sir, matching. Yes, sir, matching. If it matches, if it matches, parser consider that namespace. Parser consider the namespace as current elements namespace and perform the validation with respect to XSD. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Now let's ask the parser to validate another element. Let's say address. I'm asking the parser to validate address element. Okay. Step number one, identify and occupy the element. What is the element identified? address 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 is the element identified step number two do we have a qualifier in address element yes sir yes sir of course ns2 ns2 good step number three do we have xml ns in the current element yes sir do we have xml ns in the current element yes sir we have yes sir yes. in line number 55 in line number 55 we can see xml ns Okay. Step number four. Elements qualifier, XML NS qualifier, is it matching? Yes, sir, matching. Yes, sir. It matching. is matching. So parser consider the namespace, consider the address namespace as namespace of address element. Parser consider address namespace, address namespace as definition of address element. And control goes to the respective XSD and performs the address element validation. And if, if parser found address element definition in XSD, this element becomes valid. If parser 
don't find the definition of address element this address element becomes invalid is it clear sir yes sir okay now let's ask the parser validate city element okay now step number 1 what parser will do identify, identify element city so what is the element name identified city sir city city is the element identified by the parser step number 2 do we have a qualifier no do we have yes, a sir. qualifier yes sir. yes sir do we have a qualifier in city element yes sir ns2 yes sir ns2 it is ns2 okay do we have xml ns in the current element yes sir no sir do we have xml ns in the current element no current element don't have xml ns so what is the behavior of parser then parser yes, control no. goes to its parent parent parser control Parent. So, what is the parent of city element? Address. address. To, uh, address. So, parser control goes address, to address, address element. Try to identify the XML element. Parser control goes to address element and try to identify the XML ns in address element. So, do we have XML ns in parent element? Yes, sir. We parent have. element of city. Yes, yes, we have an XML ns in the parent element of city. That is XML ns ns two. address namespace okay so do we have the matching between element qualifier and namespace qualifier yes sir we have yes, match it it match it match right city qualifier is ns2 xml ns qualifier is ns2 it matches so the parser control goes to the respective xsd address xsd and to perform the validation on city element perform the validation on city element is it clear sir yes sir same yes, process sir. is applicable for each element that's what the reason i am saying when parser is trying to validate the state element let's assume this state element okay so the qualifier scope is limited to between open and closed tags qualifier scope will not will not go out of open and closed tags so for that reason you can use same qualifier between 55 to 50 line 59 and 65 to 69 so this guy this line number 55 to 59 don't know there is a qualifier called ns2 in line number 65 and 69 okay because that is limited within the scope any questions as of now any questions how the parser going to validate this document in combination of qualifiers and namespaces any question no no sir no, sir. no. okay now i want to do little modification in this xml sir instead of using ns3 can i use ns2 here instead of using ns3 can i use ns2 allowed or not allowed can you please confirm instead of using ns3 i want to use ns2 give me a confirmation yes, is it allowed yes, or not allowed yes, we, we can all, yes, we can it allows sir Hello. we did the same thing right so this yes. is the first address element we are using ns2 this is the second address element we can use ns2 not an issue or you can use ns3 or you can use ns10 you can use any qualifier okay so this is allowed this is allowed so there is no worries there there are no worries if you use the qualifier multiple times within the same document see within the same document i am using ns2 qualifier multiple times okay but the qualifier limitation the qualifier scope is limited between open and closed tags only okay now now okay so i introduced the qualifier concept in the entire example but still we have the duplicate uh, xml ns called address correct the objective what is the objective we want to avoid multiple duplicate entries of xml ns but we did not avoid it till now so now what i will do i will i my main objective i don't want to write xml ns more than one time i mean uh, different xml ns okay address xml ns is coming three times i don't want to write it address xml ns three times i want to reduce it okay what i can do i will improve my document like this 
instead of writing address namespace instead of writing address namespace inside the inside elements or in sub elements instead of writing address namespace in sub elements i want to write the address namespace in the root element of the document i want to write the address namespace in the root element of the document now this namespace is accessible to the entire document agree this namespace is accessible to the entire document so i wrote this yes, in student element i wrote address namespace in student element so this address namespace is accessible between open tag of student and close tag of student okay so just for uh, convenience purpose i am writing it in the next line just for the view purpose it's not mandatory to write it in the next line okay <clears throat> just to have a good view now if you see i wrote address namespace in root element and i am maintaining qualifier so qualifier is a connector it's a logical connector between namespace and the element within the document not outside of document within the document is it clear yes sir okay now if i ask parser to validate now if i ask parser to validate s name how parser will behave we'll see okay step number 1 parser identify the element for validation what is the element identified s name okay yes, step number 2 step number 2 parser identifies do we have a qualifier on s name yes we have a qualifier called yes, ns1 ns1 okay step number 3 parser check for xml ns in the current element do we have xml ns in the current element no, no there is no xml ns in the current element so parser control goes to parent of the current element which is nothing but student okay do we have xml ns in student element yes we have xml ns but we have two xml ns not just one in the parent element we have two xml ns so which one parser has to consider parser has to consider as per as per qualifier okay element qualifier is ns1 element qualifier is ns1 in the root element we have two xml ns so which one which one parser will consider parser will consider the xml ns whose qualifier is ns1 ns1 okay there are more than one xml more than one xml ns but parser don't consider all xml ns parser consider the xml ns based on the elements qualifier so element qualifier is ns1 so parser consider only ns1 namespace point is clear yes sir yes now the next step is parser control goes to the respective xsd the namespace related xsd and perform the elements validation is the point clear shall i go to the next uh, next validation okay let me validate city element i want to validate city element i am asking parser to validate this guy so what is the step number 1 identify the element so element. element identified is city okay city is the element identified for validation step number 2 do we have a qualifier yes, yes sir we have a qualifier yes, called ns2 ns2 we have a qualifier called ns2 step number 3 do we have xml ns in the current element no, no answer is no. no current element don't have xml ns so what is the immediate behavior of parser control goes to parent element current of element. current element control goes to parent element of current element so what is the parent element of current element address address, address is the parent element of current element city okay so do we have xml ns in the parent element address yes, is sir. the parent element right do we have xml ns in address element 
do we have some no, 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 listen listen again do we have xml ns in address element no, no sir no sir <laughs> give confident answer guys you are seeing my screen right what is my question what is my question do we have do we have xml ns xml ns in parent element <laughs> so sorry what is the what is the whose parent parent element of city parent do we have xml element xml ns in the parent element of city no sir no, no sir no why you took this much of time okay city element parent is address in address there is no xml ns it is visible there is no xml ns correct yes sir yes now if parser if parser don't find xml ns then control Not goes to grandparent Grand. control goes to grandparent that is true Grand city is the occupied element city is the element which parser is performing the validation who is the parent of city address who is the grandparent of city student 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 okay now parser yes, control goes to grandparent nothing but student element so we'll check do we have xml ns in grandparent yes sir yes sir how yes, many two 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 there are two xml ns in grandparent okay so out of two xml ns which is related to city ns2 out of qualifier ns2 xml ns who has a qualifier called ns2 because xml ns is prefixed with ns2 because city is prefixed with ns2 parser will pick the namespace whose qualifier NS2. is ns2 nothing but address namespace nothing but address namespace this is the one address namespace okay so parser control goes to this address namespace and the respective xsd check the definition of city element if definition found city element will be valid if definition not found city element will be invalid any questions till now no sir any questions no, no sir. everybody no, sir. everybody Done. So we did we achieve our objective or not? Yes, sir. What is our objective? Yes, sir. Instead of writing address yes. names three times, address. I want to write it only one time. Instead of writing address names space three times, I want to write it only one time. But if you want to achieve that, you need to implement the concept called qualifiers. So in a in one document, in one XML family document. we may have multiple predefined keywords few predefined keywords are from one xml ns another few set of keywords are from different xml ns it is allowed when we have more than one namespace when we have more than one xml ns it is suggestible to maintain qualifiers okay it is suggestible to maintain qualifiers so this qualifier acts as logical connector between xml ns and the element see here this this address element address address xml ns state element the logical connector is ns2 so this qualifier behaves as a logical connector between element and xml ns within the document the scope is within the document guys this qualifier will not work out of the scope okay now now i am not really happy with this i still want to decrease the document size i am not done with this i still want to decrease the document size so what i want to do is there is something called default namespace what is it what is it default namespace default namespace default namespace default namespace means in any document in any document one xml ns is allowed 
without qualifier in any document one xml ns is allowed without qualifier you got my point within the scope within the scope i mean uh, the scope i see if you see if you see this okay let me let me rewrite the example let me take this example here i want to introduce default namespace default namespace means see here i have two namespaces student namespace address namespace in these two namespaces one namespace i can use as default namespace that means i no need to write the qualifier i no need to write the qualifier for one namespace only one okay and if you see if i don't write this qualifier then i no need to have this qualifier for the elements as well you, you got my point in a document i have 10 xml ns 10 xml ns out of 10 xml ns only one xml ns is allowed without qualifier and if you have a namespace without qualifier that respective elements we no need to maintain the qualifier that respective elements we no need to have a qualifier sir you are understanding this yes sir yes sir okay so if you have a namespace without qualifier that is called that is called default namespace default namespace let me clean up the qualifiers what are all not required because i'm using address namespace without qualifier i'm using address namespace without qualifier so tell me guys how many namespaces we have in this example how many namespaces we have in this example two namespaces two namespaces student namespace address namespace how many default namespaces in this example only one, one sir. Sir. only one that is address namespace now if i ask my parser validate city element if i ask my parser validate city element okay what parser will do step number one occupy the element which is city element okay step number two identify the qualifier do we have qualifier in the current element no sir no sir no no we have no qualifier in the current element step number three do we have xml ns in the current element no sir no sir no there is no xml ns in the current element okay now control goes to parent who is the parent of city address address, address. do we have do we have xml ns in the parent element no sir we yes. haven't no sir so there is no xml ns uh -huh. in the parent then what is the behavior of parser what it will do it, it will, will go, go to, to grandparent. Grandparent. grandparent grandparent control goes to grandparent so do we have xml ns in grandparent yes sir yes sir how many two one sir how many one. we have how many xml ns we have in the grandparent two 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 we have two xml ns right which is matching with city out of these two namespaces which is matching with city defaults uh, there is no so uh, qualifier xml ns which has no qualifier is matching with city because city has no qualifier xml ns has no qualifier so these two will match clear sir so that means address namespace address namespace has no qualifier city element has no qualifier so these two are logically connected and the control of the parser goes to address xsd and check for the definition of city element if parser found definition of city element it is a valid xml sorry it is a valid element and if parser don't find the definition of city element in xsd city element becomes invalid so now this is the best tuned xml this is the best tuned xml with, with respect to the size of the document and utilizing all the options so we utilize the prefix we utilize the default namespace 
we utilized everything in this xml is it clear is it yes, clear sir. yes sir. so tell me guys what do you mean by a qualifier what is a qualifier it is a user defined keyword okay consider as consider as nickname or alias name of xmlns yes or no it must be it yes, must sir. be short keyword it must be short keyword and this guy qualifier qualifier maintains a logical connectivity logical connectivity between between element and xmlns within the scope within the scope so this is very important sir within the scope is very important okay otherwise uh, the meaning will change okay within the scope or within the document so your qualifier so suppose i have two xmls let's say i have two xmls in the first xml i have a qualifier called ns1 can i can i use ns1 as qualifier in the second document no sir i have two xml i have two xmls in the first document i have qualifier called ns1 can i use qualifier called ns1 in second document no sir no sir why what is the reason no sir it is scope in between the open and closed so what the space is not matching with the other so that's why we can't matching with second one okay let me let me give you one diagram okay i have one xml in this document i have one xml okay i don't know what this xml is at this point of time okay and i have another xml in this xml also i have bunch of elements names faces everything okay we don't even know what is the content of these two xmls okay we don't even know what is the content of these two xmls in the first xml i have 100 elements 10 10 xml ns 100 elements 10 xml ns okay one of the xml is using ns1 as qualifier in the first xml in the second xml i have 200 elements 20 xml ns okay one of the xml ns is using ns1 as qualifier is it allowed not allowed yes sir it is allowed actually both are different it documents is it is allowed why yes, sir, allowed. I mean, they don't even connect with each other xml1 don't cares about xml2 xml2 don't cares about xml1 and they don't know each other yes sir and ns1 is within qualifier works within the scope it won't work out of the scope see guys in this example see here within the document i used ns2 three times within the document yes or no but i used yes, it properly within the scopes so this ns2 is limited between 55 to 59 this ns2 is limited between 60 to 64 this ns2 is limited between 65 and 69 so why you said yes when i asked the question between two different documents so within the document itself you can use the same qualifier multiple times but we need to plan the scope properly but when you go for two different documents there is no link at all okay yes sir there is no link at all so this qualifier is allowed in the first document i am using ns1 second document also i am using ns1 there is no link between these two documents at all they really don't care yes we can use we can use because qualifier works within the scope within the scope of elements that won't come out of the element that won't come out of the document is it clear sir yes sir clear okay so you understand the definition right you understand the definition what is a qualifier yes, okay so what else sir. we discussed today default namespace 
So what is default namespace? If we if we have XMLNS without qualifier, that XMLNS is called as default, default namespace. namespace. That XMLNS is called as default namespace. That's it. We learn two keywords today. What is the qualifier? What is the default namespace? How to apply a qualifier in a document? How to apply default namespace in a document? Guys, again, I'm telling you this, the namespace concept, target namespace, namespace, qualifier, default namespace. These four keywords, let me repeat, target namespace, namespace, or you can say XMLNS. Number three, default namespace. Number four, qualifier. These four keywords are not just restricted to XML. <clears throat> the concept will be operated across all XML family documents. I mean, this concept is applied on XML, XSD, Visital, XSLT, or any other XML family language. Irrespective of technology, it may be Java Web Service, .NET Web Service, uh, SOA Web Service, or something else Web Service. But the concept will still remain same. Any questions? Any questions no, till this point? No, no, sir. Okay. So let me. Okay. I will stop our discussion for today at this point of time. Okay. Let me pause the recording. I'll stop the recording.